Neetha Ravi, and welcome to the Robert Wood Johnson Foundation Clinical Scholars video podcast series. Our guest today is Dr. Donald Schwartz, a Robert Wood Johnson Foundation Portfolio Director. When you were a commissioner of health okay. here, um, Philadelphia children had some of the highest rates of immun childhood immunization. I think they still do. Across yeah. The, yeah, in large cities across yeah. America. Yeah. Um, so now with the outbreaks of measles in Disneyland, um, and now this question of parental choice mm -hmm. and different things like that, how do you feel about um, kind of the current status of the discussion and the debate and even things like um, allowing children who aren't vaccinated to attend school, how um, those kind of regulations should be? I'm a pretty hardcore guy when it comes to immunization and you know the current pushback that has happened and is happening around measles is based on largely an article that has been discredited. But we have not had a media in this country, and we haven't had a um, uh, enough, I think, um, credibility from the point of view of the national world of public health and public health messaging to get past that uh, discredited article. And I think it reflects not only people's ability to capitalize on parents' worries, parents are worried about their kids getting autism, but also to have politicians who are courageous enough to say, gee, parents are worried about autism even though there's no science to this, we're going to support their right to do whatever. Uh, religious exemption is another piece, um, and we're a country that uh, separates church and state, sort of, um, but it's a hard one in this particular context. The current epidemic, I think, illustrates the tipping point on uh, herd immunity. And there has been in this country a balance between personal wish and uh, public health practice that has adequately favored public health practice to create a large enough herd of people who are immune that we haven't had a problem. Well, we've tipped. So now we have to figure out how to write that balance again, how to take some rights away from parents, perhaps, so that as a nation we're protected and all children are protected. Not only the children of people who get their kids immunized, but people who don't get their kids immunized should also, through public health, have their kids protected. Um, we did it pretty well for two decades or so, last couple decades, but periodically we have to tighten up again and think about how to message. Are there ways that you recommend that physicians or even um, people in public health can help create that message even at a one-on-one -on -one sure. patient level sure. or larger? Sure. I think um, the more that we can get good information out there mm -hmm. and feel as a community of physicians really clear about the evidence. So I have talked to physicians who say, yeah, I know the evidence on autism, but you never know. And sort of like, mm -hmm. we know, right? We don't, we don't have an issue here. There are times when the medical community has to come together and be a united, strong voice on an issue. Here's an example. And everybody has a responsibility, I think, whether you deal with children or adults, to be very clear. Be clear in your office, be clear with the media, be clear at cocktail parties, be clear everywhere that um, we all agree with the science on this one. And we think that there needs to be a strong statement made that says measles vaccination is safe and important. In a number of communities across the country, through messaging and appeals, people who had not immunized their children for measles have now immunized their children against measles. So knowledge is important, awareness and salience, visibility is important, and um, taking the reins on this dialogue and saying, you know, we know what's important, do this. Yeah, it works. Thank you so much for your Pleasure. time. We really Very appreciate good it. To chat with you. <laughs> yes, thank you. Thank you.